questions all the time about SIBO because I've had a pretty extensive experience with it um, and I've shared that on my social media. So I figured I would just make a whole video about it so that I can direct people here. A lot of people have asked for something like this um, and I thought it would be a good place to put all the knowledge I've acquired <laughs> in one spot. So, so if you're new to my channel, I hope that you learned something from today's video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, whether you're new or old to my channel, if you do learn something from this video or find it helpful or useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, like the video so that other people who may need to see it are able to find it more easily. Um, so the first thing I want to just put out there is my disclaimer that I'm not a doctor or practitioner of any sort. Uh, all of this information is from personal experience, talking with doctors, and doing a lot of research. Um, so please take what I say with a grain of salt or, you know, go follow up. I'm going to link a bunch of studies that I refer to in the comments or in the like description box below so you can read those studies um, and make sure that you consult with your doctor before you know, deciding on a treatment plan because everybody's body is different, of course. So um, a great just overall resource for information about SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, is SIBOinfo.com, which is run by Dr. Seibecker. She uh, puts out just amazing research. I think mean, she like compiles all the latest research. It's all linked on her website. She shares so much information. So I'll have that linked as well. Uh, great resource. But let's just start out with what is SIBO? So SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, it's basically when you get an overgrowth of bacteria from your large intestine in your small intestine. Your small intestine doesn't actually have that much bacteria relative to the rest of your digestive tract because that's usually where nutrients are absorbed. Um, so when you get an overgrowth of bacteria in your small intestine, you get SIBO, obviously. Um, and that becomes an issue because you're not supposed to have a ton of bacteria there. I'm going to go over um, symptoms and like diagnostic stuff and then I'll get into the reasons why you might even develop SIBO to um, to begin with because I get a lot of questions about that part and I'm going to address a ton of stuff related to that. So what are some of the symptoms of SIBO? Often SIBO is misdiagnosed as IBS. A lot of studies have now come out showing that the root cause of IBS is really SIBO um, when everything else has been eliminated, all other uh, potential like digestive issues have been eliminated. So a lot of the symptoms are IBS type symptoms, bloating, pain, um, gas, constipation, and or diarrhea. Um, oftentimes it ends up causing leaky gut, so you can get systemic issues like headaches, joint pain, brain fog, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of like your typical digestive issue symptoms, and if you haven't come, like you've done tons of other testing and haven't really figured anything out, you really might want to look into SIBO. Um, a lot of doctors don't know a ton about it um even more like holistic doctors it's kind of a newer diagnosis um and becoming more well known in the medical community but it's not quite there yet so how is it even diagnosed it's usually a process of elimination because a lot of doctors will check other things first um a lot of patients and other people I've talked to have had to go to their doctor and be like, I think it might be this. Can we actually do the testing for it? Can you like evaluate me for SIBO? Um, so don't be afraid to talk to your doctor about it if they haven't brought it up and you know, it sounds like it might be that to you or you haven't gotten a diagnosis um, or haven't figured out your gut issues at all and are still having them. There is a definitive test. There's both a lactose or glucose breath test that you can do. I've done the breath test a couple times. It's not fun, um, but it does give you an answer. I think there's also now there's a, um, a way that they can go in and take a sample um, of your small intestine and like test for SIBO that way as well, but they usually just do the breath test because it's non-invasive. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's a pretty simple breath test it takes about four hours to do it you drink this like gross sugar solution and then they measure your breath and you can be a methane producer or hydrogen producer or both um i'm not really going to get into that because it's not super important for this video um for the purpose of this video but there's a way to test it so let's talk a little bit about like why you would develop or how you can develop SIBO and then i'll talk about um treatment a little bit so why would you even develop or how can you even develop SIBO in the first place? Um, there's a lot of different reasons actually. So you could get a, 
overgrowth in your small intestine due to intestinal motility issues, whether that's a result of surgery, digestive abnormalities, um, even neurological issues. I'm going to get into that a little bit more, but a lot of people with like neurological disease can actually develop SIBO. Um, you can develop it from, so when I say intestinal motility problems, like if things aren't moving through your system and they're like sitting and fermenting in your small intestine, you can get overgrowth of bacteria for obvious reasons. Um, like if your ileocecal valve is not working properly and it's not closing so that the bacteria stays in the large intestine, um, then that can get overgrown into your small intestine. Uh, immunodeficiency issues can cause a development of SIBO as well because your immune system isn't strong enough to keep the um, SIBO at bay. So like if your immune system isn't working properly and can't control your gut bacteria and your gut flora appropriately, you can get that overgrowth. Um, that can be from a primary immune deficiency. It can be from chronic infection because your immune system is suppressed or overloaded trying to fight other infections. I get this question a lot like why, you know, I have chronic, I don't have a primary immune deficiency, but like should I be testing for parasites? Should I be testing for like Lyme and co chronic infections? I'm like, yes, you probably should. Um, cause SIBO can be a root cause. Like if you're dealing with IBS symptoms, SIBO can be the root cause. But if you're, I get this question a lot too. Like if you keep developing SIBO over and over again, um, you need to look into what the root cause of your SIBO is. Um, which is most likely an immune system issue or, um, you know, like an intestinal motility issue or something like that. Or the last thing I'm going to mention, which is the migrating motor complex, um, is really important to preventing SIBO. So the migrating motor complex is a, like basically a wave that runs through your whole digestive tract to keep things, um, like moved through your system. It's not the same thing as peristalsis, which is like that squeezing motion of your uh, intestinal system to create a bowel movement and move that through. This is like a wave that moves through your whole digestive system when you're not eating um, to move things through and keep basically would like move the bacteria in your small intestine into your large intestine so that it doesn't build up in your small intestine. So if that's not working properly, you can develop SIBO. Um, your vagus nerve, which is a huge nerve that um, runs and connects to basically everything in your abdomen, is really important for the functionality of the migrating motor complex. And so if you have damage to your vagus nerve or it's not working properly, your migrating motor complex is gonna be weak. And there's studies showing that people who have a poor working migrating motor complex or even vagus nerve, um, are prone to developing SIBO or they've tested SIBO patients and seen that they have a poor working migrating motor complex or MMC. Um, and I'm going to give you some tips at the end about how to like improve your migrating motor or your strength in your vagus nerve. Um, so and something that's really interesting and important is that you can actually your vagus nerve can be damaged by mental and emotional trauma. So if you have like really done all the work in all the other places, a physical work for healing, you're still dealing with um, IBS symptoms or digestive issues and you haven't done any of the trauma work, that might be something to look into. So like I was saying, like why would you continue to develop SIBO? Like you get it, you treat it, you get better, but you keep getting it again. Um, you get like chronic SIBO. It could be because you're immune system isn't strong enough and you need to really work on strengthening your immune system. It could be because your immune system is overloaded with other chronic infections that you need to address um, like Lyme or chronic viral infections or parasites or you know something like that. It could be because you actually have like an abnormality in your digestive tract that's not allowing things to move through properly um, or neurological issues that have caused damage to the nerves that innervate your digestive tract so it can't migrate motor mm, MMC is not working or like you're not getting the um, nerve signals to move things through properly. So you want to make sure you get all that testing done as well, which a GI doctor would be able to do and probably would find um, before they even found SIBO because they'd probably look into that first, but throwing all that out there for you. So something else I want to mention is that obviously if you have SIBO, and I mentioned this with symptoms, is you can get the leaky gut symptoms because you have all this overgrowth of bacteria in your small intestine that's not supposed to be there. It's causing damage and issues which can lead to leaky gut, and then you get leaky gut. Um, I have mast cell activation syndrome, so I have histamine issues, and a lot of people with 
make your gut do a lot of people with autoimmune disease do i know a lot of people have gotten this question a couple times like what's the relationship of SIBO with histamine intolerance and um there's a couple things going on there one is you have this overgrowth of bacteria so your immune system is trying to react to that and control that which may mean more histamine uh, being released which could cause histamine intolerance because you're also like that's your digestive tract So that's where the food is going and there's extra histamine in there already trying to fight infection the other thing is the bacteria bacteria overgrowth itself could be suppressing the body's ability to um, control the amount of histamine that's released or like you know bind it and Take it out of your digestive tract um, and so you're just having more histamine being released and not controlled properly so SIBO and histamine intolerance definitely can be linked um i wouldn't you know if you've done a lot of histamine work or mast cell work you might want to look into SIBO and addressing that because it could be feeding your histamine intolerances i hope that made sense so i want to talk about treatment briefly um and the low FODMAP diet and then I'm going to answer some questions that I get a lot um, that people wanted me to make sure I answered in this video. So treatment, SIBO is usually treated with a combination of antibiotics or herbals and then the low FODMAP diet. A lot of people will just do antibiotics or herbals but studies show that um, the combination of both an antibiotic or herbal protocol and following the low FODMAP diet gets the best results. Dr. Seibacher has a ton of studies linked. I'm going to link a few below. Um, again, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to go into a ton of details about this, but people ask me all the time about the treatment options. So antibiotics is usually treated with, uh, I think it's called rifaximin and, um, and or neomycin. I've only ever taken rifaximin, so my personal experience is with rifaximin and it helped me a lot. I've taken it on two separate occasions and it did help with my SIBO. I've also done an herbal protocol that was put together by my chiropractor, which was the most helpful thing I had ever done for SIBO. So I'm kind of partial to herbals, um, but the antibiotics have been really helpful in a pinch when I just don't have access to the herbals. And I know a lot of people with histamine or mast cell issues don't tolerate herbals. So that's kind of something you would have to figure out with your doctor and for yourself. Um, there are a lot of different herbals out there for SIBO, but my friend Allie from Empowered Autoimmune, she has um, a post actually on Instagram about a really um, some studies that went over herbal protocols and their efficacy. And so I'm going to link that post below because I think it's a few herbals you can easily get your hands on. You can order them on the internet and they're supposed to be pretty good. So um, I'll link that post. But then the low fat combining that like killing treatment with a low FODMAP diet is really helpful. So what the heck is a low FODMAP diet? It's a low, um, it's a diet that basically eliminates certain carbohydrates so that you are not feeding the bacteria. So basically you want to starve them and then kill them off with the antibiotics or herbals. So FODMAP stands for fermented oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. Um, and so they are things that can be anything from like it's basically complex sugars to simple sugars so certain fruits certain um like even avocados fall into that um certain high carbohydrate foods um and i will the monash university website has a ton of great like a list of all the low fodmap high fodmap foods that they've done testing on and so i'm going to link their website so you can kind of look around on that a little bit um for me, following low FODMAP diet has been really helpful with symptoms. It's especially helpful when I get a flare-up. People ask me all the time, what do you do when you get a flare-up? And I don't want to go on like treatment all the time. And I know for me, personally, the SIBO is developing because I'm still building up my immune system and dealing with chronic infection. Um, so what I'll do is go on to a low FODMAP diet for a couple weeks until my symptoms go down and then slowly reintroduce higher FODMAP foods. Um, in general, the FODMAP diet is designed to be short term uh, for two to six weeks until symptoms reside and then you can slowly introduce higher FODMAP foods. So I don't want to get, this video is already getting long, I don't want to get too much into it. Um, the FODMAP diet, I can make a whole separate video about that or if you have more questions, let me know. Um, I could just talk about FODMAPs forever. <laughs> but I hope that was generally a good like quick overview of the FODMAP diet and I'm going to link 
a list of foods that are high and low FODMAP, so <laughs> I don't have to name them all here. Some other great tips for improving um, or for like healing SIBO or even preventing it is trying to eat nutrient-dense larger meals that are four to six hours apart rather than snacking regularly because your migrating motor complex only works when you're not eating and having that four hour window allows it time to run through your whole digestive tract um so i know this can be hard for some people but if you can try to like bulk up your meals and instead of snacking every like couple hours that could be helpful another great thing for supporting your digestive tract and your vagus nerve strengthening that is um vibrational work so things like ohms or humming are great because you get that like deep um vibration in the back of your neck where your vagus nerve runs gargling like i call it power gargling but like pretty intense gargling working up to a couple minutes a couple times a day um because that vibration will get in the back of your neck and strengthen your vagus nerve really loud singing get your shower singing on your car singing on that will strengthen your vagus nerve as well um, so those are a few great ways to like strengthen that vagus nerve to strengthen the innervation to your digestive tract and make sure that um, those organs are properly functioning. Um, the next question I get a lot is, should I be taking a probiotic with SIBO? And the answer is maybe. It kind of depends on what bacteria you are lacking in your gut, what is overgrown. Um, and people ask me about probiotics all the time and I never give a specific suggestion because the probiotic you take needs to correlate with what strains are missing in your gut. So I suggest doing stool testing with a professional, with a doctor of some sort, so they can determine what sort of probiotic you need um, to help with your gut issues. So you might need a probiotic with SIBO, and then some people say don't take a probiotic with SIBO. <laughs> um, so that would be working with your doctor to figure out your specific uh, flora, gut flora, and if you need one or not. So that's kind of a general overview of what SIBO is, treatment, how it develops. I'm going to answer a couple questions I get, and then if you have more questions, leave them in the comments. So I've discussed like how I deal with a SIBO, how I deal with a flare-up, and like why SIBO may keep coming back. Those are the two most popular I get. Someone asked me about how to gain weight with SIBO if they're underweight and the biggest thing is getting rid of the SIBO and healing your leaky gut so that you're able to absorb nutrients and um, start putting on weight because my guess is probably and things are just kind of like moving straight through your system and your nutrients aren't being absorbed and like everything's just kind of moving through you and so you need to heal that get rid of that SIBO um, treat it and then work to heal your your intestinal system and your leaky gut so you can absorb nutrients and start gaining weight again someone else asked me about um, low stomach acid and SIBO and again this the biggest thing is that you can like if you were dealing with low stomach acid I would suggest taking a supplement that has pepsin and HCl hydrochloric acid supplements when you eat because that will help replace the um, the stomach acid that you're missing right now but as you heal your gut you should be able to um, get your low stomach acid back up naturally because right now the SIBO is probably like really affecting your whole digestive system if it's that overgrown um and low stomach acid can be a result of a lot of other things so i would make sure that you have looked into all the possibilities of digestive tract issues um and then another question i got was is there a relationship between SIBO and gastroparesis and dr Seibecker had just posted a new study on her website um from 2017 that shows a possible link between SIBO and gastroparesis um the study showed that they tested like a bunch of people with SIBO to see if the symptoms crossed over like if people with SIBO were having gastroparesis or people with gastroparesis had SIBO um and they did find a link there was a correlation between SIBO and gastroparesis but they noted that there doesn't need to be more studies so there definitely could be a relationship there but more research needs to be done and I'll have that study linked as well so you can take a look at it yourself um but that's kind of the extent that I know and it seems like maybe the extent that the researchers know at this time um what I'm just finding in general is that it seems like a lot of things can be linked to SIBO. They can, that can really be the root cause of a lot of digestive issues. So I think it's kind of important the medical community starts, you know, recognizing that and looking into that. And a big part of developing SIBO, um, just like a lot of health issues that we're having these days is like poor diet and not getting enough of the proper nutrients and too much like 
processed foods and sugars so and that's obviously not the case for everyone it's also immune suppression issue which can result from chronic infection and all these other things that have changed in our life um you know more pollution and um emfs and that sort of thing so i think healing siebel really is like a all-encompassing holistic approach um or needs to be an all-encompassing holistic approach to treat it making sure that you're taking care of your body and your environment to support your whole system especially your immune system if you're not dealing with like a specific um like gut abnormal digestive tract abnormality type of thing so <laughs> i've talked a lot i hope again like i always do that this video was helpful and informative and you learned a lot about SIBO um, and maybe you know got some uh, helpful tips that you didn't know about I said subscribe give this video a thumbs up leave any other questions you have about SIBO in the um, comments below and I will get back to them if I get a lot I'll just make another video follow-up video um, like I always say I'll do um, and yeah I think that's it so I will see you all next time <laughs>